one. Hi, good evening, welcome. Um, I'm Sophie Kirkham and this is Tasha de Cruz. Um, and we are here for the second of three really useful Nourish Your Bump, Nourish Yourself sessions. Hi, Tasha. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> Thanks Tasha, for having me um, again. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it's a pleasure. Um, we've just been um, catching up in the few seconds that we've had before we went live. Um, I am um, Sophie, I'm a hypnobirthing teacher, I'm a doula. Um, I, I'm fascinated by birth and pregnancy. Um, I want women to have an easier time of birthing and an easier start to parenthood. That's what I'm all about. Um, and as parenthood goes, I've had a pretty tough day. My daughter has um, nappy rash. Maybe that will happen one day when your baby's here and it's tough, really tough. So we've been following her around Hey, nothing on bottom half this evening, just a little bit of air get to it, and uh, I'm a bit pooped. However, um, it's really important that we get this work done because um, the first session that we did last week was about what to eat when you're pregnant, how to nourish yourself when you're pregnant, and this one tonight, really important, because uh, all too often women are told not to eat and drink in their labour. <laughs> oh dear, that's terrible. Okay, so Tasha, would you like to begin? Would you like to start? Um, we've got a few things to cover. What, what are the main things that you're going to cover? Yeah, so, um, yeah, a few things. Uh, it's really um, interesting actually doing this talk together because I think what I, um, my point of view as nutritionist often comes from what to eat immediately before giving birth and then sort of immediately after and then and so on. And actually not a huge amount on what to do during so actually you know with our joint experience and knowledge it's really useful to get together because you've you're you're there as a dealer you're there with the women and you know exactly what it's like for them <laughs> so it's going to be a really great discussion but what I um yeah so what I want to um just sort of have a chat about today really is about nutrition um just before birth so I guess in the kind of the last month but definitely in the last um week couple of days mm. um before birth obviously you can never know when that's going to happen know. <laughs> so when you're in the drop zone so should we say like from 37 weeks yeah yeah exactly Is that okay to sort of say look from 37 weeks let's start thinking along these lines you don't yeah. know when you're going to go into yeah. labor yeah um and if you're not familiar with the hypnobirthing month, which is one of Marie Mongan's ideas, um, it's saying, look, babies come anytime between kind of 38 and 42 weeks. So if you didn't know that, um, and you're like, oh, oh my God, what, 38 weeks? Oh my goodness. Then um, think on that and maybe put yourself and your birth partner on call from 37 weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's nutrition just before giving birth. Um, yeah. I'd like to uh, uh, sort of touch a little bit on um, birth hormones and nutrients, mm. specifically about nutrients which support birth hormones. Um, I really cannot wait to hear about. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything about that. I'm really fascinated. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, a little bit about gut bacteria, the importance of um, our gut, what's going on in there, probiotics and so on, um, okay. and how that sort of what that means for baby. Um, I guess after birth, especially, um, and then and then yes, about nutrition during birth um, a little bit, and obviously, as I said, you're probably got that much more hands-on experience on that, so it'd be really interesting to see um, how we sort of gel on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll do that a little bit towards the end on um, yes, how to actually um, help a woman support her in eating and drinking during her labour. Um, and as the birth partner as well, doing so. Um, yeah, don't just sort of fly by the seat of your pants. You need to maintain your energy, conserve your energy and maintain it. Yeah. Okay. All right then, let's go. <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> Got it right there over my shoulder. Let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. Um, so in terms of just before giving birth, I mean, so if, if you joined us last week, um, we talked a lot about nutrition during pregnancy and, and, and uh, we did talk about the last trimester as well. So it's all similar. So if you didn't um, catch that, definitely watch that and kind of because it goes into much more detail um, than what I'm going to talk about today. Um, but in the last trimester, we kind of tend to um, get a bit of a drop in 
energy um, and that's natural but then at the same time um, there's this famous kind of nesting instinct that happens and suddenly you know women start sort of I don't know wanting to paint the nursery or move furniture around or move house or whatever um, and there's a bit of a balance there because you want to get the get the place ready but then you yeah. also really want to conserve energy um, and actually it's a really good time to be slowing down. Um, there's going to be emotional highs and lows, you know, highs of, oh, my God, I'm going to meet my baby soon. And then the lows of what kind of parent am I going to be <laughs> who gave me this responsibility? <laughs> um, yeah. So slowing down, looking at, at this last trimester, but especially that last kind of month, um, you know, from 37 weeks onwards, as a time to nurture and conserve. You want to you wanna be looking after those energy con- um and conserving your energy stores um okay. labor healing breast milk these are the three factors that you're you're really building your nutrient stores especially your energy stores um mm. and yeah and and baby has a surge of growth in that last trimester i mentioned that um last week as well uh, and you have an extra of sort of 400 ish calorie per day requirement to kind of um enable that surge of growth yeah. But also to make sure that you're keeping your, you're, you're getting those st- uh, stores of energy up in time for giving birth. Um, I keep reading about labor being um, a feat of endurance, like it's like an endurance um, activity. Yeah. It um, can be, it can be sometimes, you know, like, so I was um, fortunate enough to be at the birth of a little girl this week. Um, so, you know, welcome Earthside little girl. And um, her mum had quite an epic labour. It went on for a long time. Wow. And um, yeah, it's it's incredible how strong we are. And we're just not educated and trained to know that. That's part of what my work is. It's making sure that women know yeah. how strong they are. And yes, I often talk about having a tank of energy, keeping it full. So hearing you talk about um, conserving your energy stores, um, yeah and your reserves i just see that as really 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 useful information so yeah. you, you know you've got your visualizations for your surges but maybe we need another one and it's like how full is my tank yeah you know because yeah. i don't want to run out of energy yeah exactly and is i mean the, the, the hip the hypnobirthing thing is all about training and preparing the mind and the body for this um, physical uh, activity that you're going to be doing potentially for a long time, um, hours, yeah. days. I um, just don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's the same thing with um, with food. You, you want to get almost into training. You want to prepare your body for okay. that, you know, that endurance. You know, you wouldn't go and run a marathon without kind of training for mm-hmm. For a year, maybe. <laughs> I don't For know if I've done a marathon and I I've never done will. Yet. <laughs> but beforehand, you know, don't you? You know that you've got to um you've got to eat. Um and well okay, tell us a little bit about the why. why? You know, why not just trust on the reserves that you've got? Why why do we need to actually eat? Yeah, because I think um I think it takes a lot more than than we realize. I think it, for first time mums, um you just think it's a natural process. I'm you know, it it's just it's just going to happen and and I'll be fine. But actually um it it does it takes up a lot of energy. I mean, it's, it's a bit I there's a lot of I was doing a bit of research actually before this and trying to work out whether you can put a finger on how many calories you burn in in labor and I actually think it's a bit contentious I, I, I've seen something like 50,000 calories and I think that's clearly that not, sounds, not that, no okay. that's ridiculous no, no. <laughs> but, we're not trekking across Antarctica yeah, no. do you know what I mean but, uh, yeah. but it is thousands but it's, it's a lot of be. calories yeah. yeah it's a lot more than your your sort of recommended 2,000 calories per day intake that is supposed to balance out your um you know, it's a lot more than that. It is obviously going to be a lot more like that. Just like running a marathon is a lot more than just having running your day to day life. Um, so, yeah, so energy is definitely important. Um, but also things like protein and um, your omega-3 stores are really important, especially in that last uh, month or so, because that's your, your baby, as I said, is growing. Um, yeah. The brain is growing as well. And yeah. these are two sub two. Um, uh, nutrients that are really really important for the brain um, but protein also helps with that kind of 
that endurance of <laughs> of labor um mm. and also two really important um nutrients are zinc and iron and zinc because it's really really important in your for your immune system um yeah and also for the healing process so again um when you're going through labor your body is uh experiencing an assault on its immune system um, oh can we reframe the word assault please yes of <laughs> it's course. going through um a there's a high demand yeah yeah and 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 that's just want to soften that word yeah yeah absolutely and um and and that's normal i mean your immune system is often um dealing with this it's it's primed to deal with this but just yeah. making sure your stores of zinc are optimum um are really important and you get zinc in, in foods like um pumpkin mm. seeds um i mean it's quite it's it's not it's um it's something that you can get relative, like, you know, from food, seafood. Um, oysters is a good source, but obviously we're not supposed to eat raw, raw oysters. I, I probably <laughs> shouldn't have. But I, I've told you this already. When I was pregnant with my daughter last year, I craved mussels. Like, I would yeah. have them for breakfast. Yeah. And I was having a very sort of paleo diet, which is kind of cave woman diet of meat, fish, vegetables, and a little bit of fruit. And, um, yeah, and I asked you, I said, what's this thing? Why do I crave mussels? And you said, well, that'll be the zinc and zinc the iron. And possibly, and, and iodine as well, actually, is another one. Oh, iodine, um, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um, but, yeah, so that's the healing. And then and iron is really... Um, Need necessary for the for the blood loss that you might um, that you you will experience during um, yeah. during birth as well. Um, so you you need to make sure that if you because again, baby's been taking your iron from you for the last well nine months, but especially in that last trimester. Um, mm. So making sure that your iron stores are on, are kind of in good reserve. So, so what that, are you, your advice then? What could we do? So it's, some women will get given iron tablets, and then yeah. they're that might make them constipated and that's not fun yeah um and what what could they do on mm. a daily basis yeah so if, they, you, if you've been given iron tablets that that would be likely because when you were tested in your um last trimester you will have come back with low iron um so your uh, midwife or whoever would have suggested um iron um yeah. On a day-to-day -day basis, what you can eat, so red meat is the, um, is the one that everyone knows about, um, yeah. is, it is a really, really good source of iron, um, uh, and it's a very usable source of iron, so it's one that our body just knows how to absorb, how to, how it's, it's, there's sort of two forms of iron, um, essentially, one is uh, kind of animal-based and one is plant-based, and the animal right. one is just much better it's much easier for our body to use. Um, okay. Plant sources of iron, I mean, green leafy vegetables, the darker, mm -hmm. the better, the darker, the, the more iron. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, vitamin C helps um, iron to be absorbed. So mm -hmm. if you're uh, in, in the kind of um, plant-based form, so if you've got, for example, if you're, if you're having a, uh, some kale with your dinner, a squeeze of lemon juice, it's really simple. It doesn't have to be like, a, you know, I've got to take right, a vitamin yeah, C tablet delicious. as well, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And, and actually, that's what I love so much about cooking is that quite often we do these things without realizing mm. that they're, it's really important to put these two nutrients together. We don't know that when we're doing this. They just happen to also be delicious. <laughs> makes it more e easier for the iron to be absorbed by the... It's it's the it's the vitamin C actually. It's not the acid. It's the okay. vitamin C in citrus vitamin fruit. C. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. So those okay. are those are those are. That's just some really simple. Just food to eat to make Meat sure that you've got green, your iron. dark green leafy vegetables yeah. and anything else. Anything else. So vegans and veggies. What could they do? Yeah, well, just the, those kind of dark green leafy veggies, um, nuts and seeds and grains. I mean, they all, they, you know, most foods do have a small amount of iron in. You just, um, if you're vegan especially, you're going to want to just make sure that you're eating quite a lot of, the, yeah. of quantity for this. And you're probably, I would say if you're vegan especially, um, you might be uh, low on iron and you, you might be suggested to, to take a, a supplement. Um, it's, 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 it's a relatively common uh, deficiency in in vegans because yeah. um because it's just because it's just that much harder for our body to absorb it um okay. compared to meat so it's just it's just a little bit harder okay um yeah um, just noticing there's a comment on facebook however new to be live as we are i can't see her name 
that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? It says comment from Facebook. Still, um, from still, still yeah, I can see. Still oh, you can see. So yeah. she's actually saying her ferritin levels were worryingly low. I don't actually, I'm not a midwife, so I don't know what the, the guideline would be for like a good amount. Um, so she says, um, yeah, maybe you can help me out. Now, ferritin and iron, is that... Yeah, so ferritin is the protein. Yeah, ferritin is the protein that carries your iron. Um, so if you have low ferritin, then your body is just not able to um, carry the iron around um, as well. Um, I, I, I wonder whether you've been given a supplement as well, because again, um, having low ferritin, it's one of those things that people, you know, you might, you might be prescribed um, a supplement because again, the more iron you have in the body, the more potentially ferritin um, that is available can carry it around. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, if she ups her red meat and her dark green leafy veg, then it's going to make a difference. Yeah. And that and dark green salad leaves as well so yeah I, I always think of rocket and spinach watercress and those are the things that i put in center smoothies yeah yes yes <laughs> lovely Great after that. <laughs> yeah okay go on um tasha sorry i i kind of want to not interject but you know um ask questions because it's fascinating um so nutrition just before birth just to recap if you're joining us now um, Tasha um, has mentioned that we need to kind of conserve energy and we need to top up our energy reserves within our systems. Um, and so have a watch back from the start. I don't think you can rewind this, but you'll be able to catch it in 20 minutes or so from the beginning. Um, you're training yourself to eat well, um, particularly third trimester um, when the baby's asking for a lot more from your system, so you need to be replenishing it, otherwise you're going to be left with a deficit here and there. Um, so, Tasha, you wanted to talk also about gut health and probiotics. And can yeah. I just say that a lot of women um, who've had um, a birth where there have been special circumstances or, you know, extra kind of help, sometimes they might pick up an infection and be given antibiotics. So this is kind of really useful information. So gut health and probiotic um, yeah. use. And maybe you could just say a little bit as well about women who've been given probiotics um, after birthing yeah. um, as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so 70% of our immune system resides in the gut, which is incredible. Mm. And that's mostly down to what we call the good bacteria or the probiotics um, in our gut. I mean, we also have what, what you might consider bad bacteria in our guts, but that's totally normal. It's normal to have um, sort of what we would call good bacteria. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, oh, sorry, my keyboard's just popped up. Let me just, okay. <laughs> um, good bacteria, you know, some, some sort of good bacteria, some sort of neutral bacteria that we, don't, we either don't know any, enough about or they're sort of hanging out, not really harming, but not really doing anything for us as well. Um, okay. And then there's the so-called bad bacteria. And again, if it's all in balance, if you've got um, a better amount, a higher amount of the good bacteria, it's keeping the bad bacteria in check. Um, it's when the bad bacteria kind of overgrow, that's when you know you might start having gut issues. So that's just a general kind of overview. Um, there's 10, this is like, this blows my mind every time I, I, I read this stat, but there's 10 times more bacteria in our body um, at any one time than number of cells in our body. And when you think about, I mean, cells are the tiny, tiniest part of our, our bodies, you know, it's just incredible. Um, so yeah. bacteria are really, really key. Now, they used to think that there was no bacteria um, in the womb. They used to think that it was completely sterile Not until, until yeah. your birth. But they've recently um, found that there's bacteria in the placenta and in the amniotic fluid, yeah. which suggests that from the time when you're in the baby's in the womb, he's, he or she is already starting to build that immune system. Remember, 70% of our immune system resides in the gut. So if, that's, if he's ingesting this through um, in the womb, He's already building it. And, and research suggests that this is especially happening in the last trimester. So, um, yeah, so that's that's really interesting. And and the it's a fascinating thing, Tasha. I, learn, I love it. It's yeah. fascinating. I remember reading about the microbiome of the placenta being 
the same as the mother's oral microbiome. So it's okay. living in her mouth. Yeah. And I was like, how? Yeah, how? that's how? interesting. <laughs> I, I don't think I've read that. That's really interesting. I'll, I'll, um, I'll go back and read about that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really and it cool. is, and it is um, dependent, the quality of the bacteria in the placenta and in the uh amniotic fluid is dependent yeah. on the quality of the bacteria in in mum as well um so so if she's taken pro, um antibiotics during pregnancy for i don't know a urine infection or something like that not a urine infection you know what i mean a uti yeah um then is it is it worth taking probiotics yeah so um there's two specific probiotics that are especially useful to take um, in the last in pregnancy but yeah. especially in the last trimester um, there's one um, that uh, you know and, and, and what, what I mean by that is these these might be probiotics that are specially formulated with specific um, bacterial strains that are shown to be useful for different things um, right. so one would be a probiotic that is um, uh, or, or that contains bacteria that is known to reach the vaginal um, tract. So that mm -hmm. is, um, uh, yeah. So essentially, a probiotic um, that is that that is good for that. And the reason for that is so that when you're birthing, if you're birthing naturally, um, the bacteria in your vaginal uh, tract is of really good quality because that is when your, bo your baby is going to be ingesting um, mm. the largest proportion of his um, of, of bacteria and yes. being introduced into the wider world. And that's his first kind of introduction to <laughs> the, the big world out there. The big world um, out there. So it's, it's as the baby's head, um, if the water's released, if they haven't, I'm not sure what happens. So it just be the bacteria that's in the placenta and the amniotic fluid they pass down as they move down towards you know birthing they would get those bacteria from your vagina in mum's vagina into their nose into their mouth their eyes their ears all around on their skin and that helps to form like you say this this immune system um and i know that there is more and more research going into um what's it called now help me out some kind of vaginal or vulval swabbing yeah. for babies yeah. who are born by cesarean yeah. because they won't have had that opportunity yeah. to pass through, pass through the birth path and a lot of um babies born by cesarean tend to get asthma and eczema and, and the evidence suggests that that's because their microbiome was seeded mm. a different way Mm -hmm. um, with bacteria in the operating theatre. Yeah, and it's and it's you know, known. I wonder about that, Tash. You know, can't yeah. we just remedy that over time? Yeah. Well, so I mean, it's known that babies born through C-section do have different gut bacteria composition than babies born naturally. It, it is known. Um, breastfeeding, um, lots of skin to skin contact with mum. Mm -hmm. um you know lots of kissing <laughs> all of these mm -hmm. kind of things do help with the microbiome um but i think uh, that 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 very first introduction is very important um mm -hmm. through the through the vagina so but you can remedy that with um probiotics so for newborns you can get um a probiotic that is um specifically for newborns well it's, it's actually good for infants uh, sorry newborns and babies up through childhood really um okay. and you can just kind of take a little dab on your finger and kind of put it in in the baby's mouth to suck on or you can put a little bit on your nipple if you're breastfeeding yeah. um so that's a really good idea it's quite an easy way to, to to get some probiotics in there and it is important um if if even if um you are um born by naturally if you've had any antibiotics during pregnancy if you've had any medication um yeah. during pregnancy um it, that can and your diet as well that can all affect your um, bacteria in your gut and in your um, vagina too so you know yeah. even even so it, it could be a good idea to have um, a little probiotic top up um yeah True. It's it's actually not known. So, so so breastfeeding will give a lot of um, probiotics. Um, it's not really known actually the effect of the probiotics that mum ingests, the effect on her actual 
breast milk, which yeah. is really interesting. They're sort of researching that. Um, yeah. So, but maybe being able to take it directly um, is 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 helpful. It's, it's helpful, especially yeah. as well if if a baby's been given antibiotics when they were born, if they picked up yeah. an infection or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really good to know. Um, can you give us a recommendation? Do you know? Of what yeah, you're the brand that I like the best is one called Octibax, and the reason yeah. I like them Heard is them. because they have an awful lot of research on their website um so you can uh, just as a lay person you can so they have lots of blogs and articles you know aimed at the lay person but also at health professionals so if you if you actually want to kind of get a bit deeper into the science of it or re, you know see what their research is um you know because so they base their formulas on really robust research um, and it's just they've just made it so easy <laughs> for you to find their research and understand why they've recommended specific things. So um, that's why I like them. It's also a really good formula. It's a really nice. Um, the supplements are just really good quality. Um, mm -hmm. They always contain strains that are very specific to whatever it is that you're looking for um, support in. And they do a specific infants and um, children formula, and it's in a sachet, so you can mix it for children. Oh, you can mix it like in a... teething granules and teething powders. Something like sachet. that, I think. You yeah. Just yeah. To their mouth. Um, and then uh -huh. the other one, um, they do have a, um, so so if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding, you can take that as well. You can take that probiotic too. That's um, perfectly safe and good you know a good idea um and they also do a one specifically for women it's called for women and okay. that is that's the one that contains the two strains that are just known to um be able to reach the um vagina without kind of getting destroyed by the uh, digestive tract <laughs> um okay. so again that so those two um would be a good thing to take in that last trimester um ready and in that last for. month ready for birthing yeah. um yeah okay um so um birth hormones and nutrition yeah so <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing um so the so the the, the 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 hormones that are important uh during during birth are um uh, oxytocin prolactin um and endorphins and the three of them um help with um uh, contractions they help with uh producing breast milk, bonding, um, and endorphins, especially for pain relief um, during birth. Yeah. Um, so the nutrients, I've actually noted this down because I wanted to make sure I didn't <laughs> miss any out. So the nutrients that are really important um, for yeah, the hormones. Paper ready, folks. <laughs> <laughs> are, <laughs> um, vitamin C. So that's obviously, that's easy. Most people know vitamin C, citrus fruits, kiwi, you know, most fruits, most vegetables have some sort of um, vitamin C in as well, um, but especially yeah. the citrusy ones. Um, uh, and yeah, um, copper, zinc and calcium are three really important minerals. Um, and these you can get in things like green leafy vegetables, um, uh copper and zinc from red meats uh, or any meat actually uh, obviously calcium from dairy and also from green leafy vegetables sesame seeds all seeds are good source but sesame seeds are particularly good so things like tahini hummus good for calcium um, bone broths um, really mm. good uh, source of all minerals um, because they come out of the, the bones of the animals into the liquid and that's a really um, hydrating really um, uh, nourishing uh, warming drink um, to, to have and I, I often mm. sort of recommend that as something to, to have actually throughout pregnancy um, for very many various reasons um, but yeah in that last trimester mm. um, it would be quite a nice one to have actually during, like when you're giving birth um, it's just whether it's you can stomach it <laughs> sample birth preferences it says you know this woman needs to be able to move around and be able to follow the lead of her body and she needs to be able to eat and drink and use you know broth and yeah. um and yeah funnily enough when I had my first baby Fred um I wanted soup in my labor yeah yeah pea and ham soup it wasn't broth. oh interesting um, why, why haven't yeah. they be made from a good ham stock though <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah. okay so, so calcium and zinc and and copper copper uh, 
all the all the B vitamins. <clears throat> so that's um, B3, oh, yeah. folate, B6, um, and B12. And again, um, uh, folate and B12 are best sourced from red meat. Uh, well, all meats will have a source. Uh, will have some. Uh, uh, all animal products are eggs as well um, but red meat is particularly good for B12 um, and then the other B's good uh, are high in grains and, and green leafy vegetables again uh, okay. so uh, yeah these are the B, B vitamins and then the last two uh, are iron and magnesium mm -hmm. and these are particularly uh, or magnesium is particularly important for the endorphins so that's the pain management the natural pain management hormones that you want to be 10 to. times stronger than opiate opium oh i'm it's... making up I, do you know what i've said this like a thousand times in class and now i'm having a brain block <laughs> they're <laughs> 10 times stronger than morphine thank morphine. you okay. really oh my gosh yeah. that's amazing um and we do like in labor so in my humble experience of two births i've found that yeah you get really heady um on the literally shed loads of hormones that are flooding your system and the endorphins are definitely there and i think they also help to create a very amnesiac state for the woman yeah just onto our next bit of hang on a minute you've not eaten anything for several yeah. hours oh has it been several hours blimey you know i've been like i'm busy <laughs> so yeah um iron and magnesium so mm -hmm. we talked about iron before mm -hmm. um magnesium there's a wonderful skin salt spray that you can buy um, and I really like using that um, and uh, would put it in my, say, birth bag um, and use salt baths, Epsom yeah. salt baths. Yeah. Some women are afraid of bathing in labour. It's okay. You can, uh, sorry, bathing during pregnancy. Um, it's okay. If you're worried about the temperature, it, it should only be 38 degrees. So um, just get a thermometer. You're probably going to get a thermometer for your baby's bath anyway so just get it earlier because it's really nice to luxuriate in a bath and chuck some salt in and if you're like me and you can't stay in the bath very long but you want to to relax and get the benefit of the salts in the water listen to a hypnobirthing yeah. chat this yeah. and then you know you've got 25 minutes half an hour of a track to listen to whether it's on your phone on loudspeaker somewhere safely away from the bar so you don't like kill your phone or electrocute yourself when I had my son nearly 10 years ago, um, I didn't have smartphones. So I had my laptop on, like, the toilet seat lid was down. I had that on loudspeaker playing whilst I had an assault bath. Um, and, yeah. Salts. I don't know if that's on your list. Salt on your list? Um, because of sodium, I was just thinking. Yeah, um, I mean, it's 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 it is in the sense of um, under nutrition just before. Uh, sorry, nutrition during um, during birth, um, not specifically on on hormones, but yeah, um, oh, obviously right. that 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 is going to be really super important. So yeah, so that's um, pretty much it on the on the um, on the nutri nutrients uh, on birth in birth and birth hormones i mean again if you've been eating relatively well throughout your pregnancy and especially in that last trimester getting getting your vegetables um your meat your 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 protein um your good fats in um mm. if you're you know you're gonna have good stores of, of these things anyway um so it's just about just being really aware that these things it's not yeah. you're not you know we 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 know we we often eat because we're hungry because we just want it you know because we know that's what we do but i i i mean this is why i studied nutrition i just think there's so much power in knowing what those little things that you're eating all the little micronutrients and and so on what they're doing to you and, and how they directly affect everything in that that we do on a day-to-day -day basis in our system yeah. and and even more so in pregnancy because we just go through so much change and then it changes again during labor and then it changes again when we've given birth and it's just incredible it um, keeps on evolving and it's very fluid and yeah we haven't mentioned such as um pregnant yes i am a baby <laughs> I am. 2019 baby um, if you're watching right live now, tell us, um, when's your baby due? When's your baby due? Are you in the third trimester? Are you in the second trimester and suddenly changing your shopping list? <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Um, 
All right. So what's our next topic on the list? Well, I think we can um, definitely move on to talking about uh, food during labour um, yeah. and then we can sort of bring in your um, your expertise here as well. Oh, God. I don't like calling myself an expert. The more I know, the less I know. Do you yeah. know what I mean? The yeah. more I understand, the less I'm like, oh, just meeting the midwives, you know, at birth and things. I just want to be a sponge and just absorb all this amazing info and sort of, oh, I just find it fascinating. And um, we spend quite a lot of time on a hypnobirthing program. So um, teaching and sharing about nutrition one of the things we recommend is that you use a um, like a nutrition tracker for a week so you can get any number of apps um i recommend the um my fitness pal because you're not calorie counting but you enter in what you're eating and then you can hit a total button and it shows you the nutrition so everything tash has just been discussing you can make sure you're hitting those targets um and it actually in terms of protein it's recommended 70 to 90 grams per day I just wanted to put that little fact in. Now, in labour, um, I did do a sketch earlier and I wanted to do a video, um, to, but I'll have to do it later, about something that I'm, an idea, a concept called the chewing timeline. I love this. <laughs> I, I think this is a really clever idea, um, she says. Um, I think it's a clever idea because... If you imagine, okay, and I've got an asterisk on my diagram, it says every woman is different, every birth is different. A lot of births start off with surges that are spaced further apart, and as labour progresses, filling an opening, surges get longer, stronger, closer together. As labour progresses and the surges get longer, more powerful, stronger, there's less space in between, there's less rest space in between. So at the beginning of your labour, you may have um, surges with a decent chunk of time in between. And in terms of chewing food, okay, so it's a chewing timeline, you can actually chew stuff. So, you know, you could have um, a bowl of stuff um, when you think that labour is about to begin. Um, and you can chew that and you can swallow it because you have time for your next surge comes. And again, back to conserving energy and keeping your energy tank full, that's really important. Occasionally, women um, suffer from vomiting in their labours, um, and that's horrible. Um, I think it's really, really, really important to get the midwives to give you some anti-sickness um, medication. I think it's normally an injection. I don't know, I'm not a midwife, but I think it's normally an injection in your bottom of your leg. Anyway. Don't want to be vomiting during your labour because that's not nice anyway and you're going to be losing <laughs> literally your energy because of it and i'm mentioning it because it sometimes happens and i want people to know and i want you to be prepared so the long gaps between surges give you time to chew stuff and then let's say your surges start to get closer together and they're you know they're a bit longer so your rest time in between your surge is shorter and so you, you're now into the kind of broth section, okay? You Now you're into your broths, your soups, your maybe smoothies, um, anything that's going to sustain energy, but that doesn't need to be chewed. <laughs> because it might not be that you've got enough time between your surges to chew stuff. Whereas you can have a sip of something. Um, bottles with straws in are fantastic. It's very difficult to drink like if up a glass when you're, you know, on all fours or in a birthing pool. It's much easier if someone passes you a straw and you can just have um, a, a suck on that straw and it could be warm broth or it could be a cool smoothie, whatever takes your fancy. But think about it, okay? Think about these stages. I can chew stuff at the beginning, so I can load up on carbs at the beginning and chew all that stuff. And then, you know, I've got shorter rest. And then towards the end, so we're now we're talking about four in 10. So you're having four surges every 10 minutes. We're into that expulsive surge phase where you've gone from your thinning and opening phase to that mighty launch phase. Um, it's really hard to eat them um, because there just isn't that space in between surges. There may be, I just want to remind everybody, a little phase 
between the kind of shorter rests and launch mode where things slow down a little bit. And it might not be that you, so if you cover your bases and you're, why, why is this slowed down? It's not that you're dehydrated. It isn't that you haven't peed. It isn't that you haven't eaten. It isn't that your birthing space is being disturbed all the time. It isn't the people that are with you. Actually, they're all wonderful. You feel safe. They're all cervix opening personalities. It could just be what they call um, a rest and be thankful. A rest and be thankful. Oh, lovely. There's a phase where your body might go, oh my goodness gracious me, I have worked really hard. Let's have something to eat and just rest. And then boom. And that's what happened when I had my little girl last year. Um, I had a rest and be thankful. <laughs> so much so that the midwives tucked me into bed. I was still surging. They tucked me into bed, stroked me, gave me a kiss. They give us a call when you're ready for us to come back. They left at half past eight, and I birthed my daughter at 18 minutes past nine. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, let's say a rest and be thankful phase could be um, followed by a very quick birth phase. Every woman's different, every birth is different. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to also say that in our relationships with our partners. Um, so I, I think the majority of women watching this are probably in a relationship. Um, if you're a single mom, that's absolutely cool and every every calm wish for you. Um, I want you to speak to your birth partner about, um, well, give them permission to be a feeder in your labor. So to be somebody who will actually offer you food and kind of, almost coerce you into eating it and this is an awkward um conversation uh to have with someone in labor because sometimes women are just like no i do not want to eat go away with that i don't banana get lost however you need to keep upping and refilling your tank with the food and it might just be a few sips of broth that just do the trick it might be at the very end you just have a couple of spoonfuls of honey so important so give your birth partner permission to do that um and your birth partner also needs to be really on it with their eating um and if you're going to eat something that's a bit smelly or as <laughs> Tasha tell me up not smelly um a food that has uh, an odor to it so it's not just like a plain sandwich then eat it out pungent. of no pungent food <laughs> Um, don't eat it in her space because she might not appreciate it. I think women might not appreciate it. Um, so eat that elsewhere and then come back. Um, but yeah, always have fresh breath as a birth partner. Make sure you have lovely, fresh, minty breath. Um, I think it's really unpleasant to breathe sort of not fresh breath on a birthing woman. That's just actually horrible. Just a little, just a little I love thought. That. That's just one thing to put in the hospital bag, isn't it? Some really strong mints or something. Yeah. <laughs> Always have mint or chewing gum or something, yeah. So, um, yeah, listening to all of that. Um, oh, um, I forgot another important part, Tash, actually. So on my chewing timeline, I've got the start, I've got chewy food, and then we move into the soups and the broth, and then we move into the end, maybe just a spoonful of honey. Um, and then between birthing your baby and waiting for white, optical cord clamping and birthing the placenta or birthing the placenta and then cutting and clamping the cord. I think once you've met your baby and you've got your baby, I think that's a time when we absolutely need to eat something. There's an, um, one of my midwife friends calls it emptying. There's a lot of emptying going on in your body and that emptying um, can sometimes make us a little bit faint which might be why midwives want you to get out of the birth pool once you've birthed and stuff they want to get you nice and comfy for birth in the placenta so if you do get a bit faint you're in a good place so make sure that you have something to eat in between birthing your baby celebrate and birthing the placenta it could be just a bit of flapjack yeah just something go on but, yeah. so tell me listening to all of that What's your insight? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. Uh, and I love the um, chewing timeline because it really, I think for me, it really helps to, to think about how I can prepare for that 
yeah. stage for, for labor. I can go, okay, I'm, I'm going to fill my fridge with stage one foods. <laughs> I'm going to fill, you know, and that's going to be things like um, probably quite warming foods, like uh, definitely the soups, but also the, like maybe stews. But mm. still, I would say I'd want something quite easy to chew and definitely something quite easy to digest as well, because you don't want to be using up your energy to be digesting yeah. um, foods. Okay. So warm um warm foods tend to be easier to digest um and especially if it's if there's meat in it something that is quite well cooked um again mm. so it's easy to digest um but yeah so yeah i'm definitely thinking of, of things and that's in the very early stage it's a stew thing um and then yeah when you're still kind of feeling able to 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 chew um snacks like oat cakes um with hummus um flapjacks lovely i love that um, date and nut energy balls. Um, yes, I think the, yeah. the, the dried fruit is a really love, you know, really good source of um, glucose, and that's that's really going to sort of send some real energy straight to where you need it. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, what else have I written down? I've got grapes. Grapes are nice and sort of sweet and easy to. They are. They definitely come under the chewing. Thing, yeah, so. yeah. 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 For sure. Because you, you don't want to choke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a bag of dates, uh, grapes this um, birth at the beginning of the week and didn't get around to eating them. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's no way she can chew a whole grape yeah. in between these surges. Yeah. Um, no. One of the um, things that the midwives do in that later stage as well is they want to listen to the baby every five minutes during the launch phase, during that birthing phase. I personally find it incredibly irritating and I have to use it as a deepener. Every time I feel a doctor on my abdomen, I double my relaxation because I'm just like, what, listening to? Listening again already? <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's really, really tricky to chew or eat. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, let's go. Uh, and then moving on to the sort of... Um, can't chew any more stage things like yogurt um would be would be quite a nice thing and again you could you could uh, make a, a compote or you know like a like a pureed apple or something if you wanted to have a flavor to it um obviously some honey through there some cinnamon um nice uh yeah i love as yeah. well that kind of very final phase of, of stage where you're just like i can't do anything can't swallow and a spoonful of honey is just to me, it just sounds like a really nice, um, it's a nice, a really nice thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. It's just the same thing. So yeah. yeah. So when you're um, when you're birthing your baby next year, when you're in labour next year, you can have little labels on stuff. Yeah, or just exactly. A menu. <laughs> Yeah, a menu, and, and I've got um, yeah, we've got a we've got a smaller fridge as well, and I just feel like I'm going to fill like one shelf with the chewing phase, <laughs> one shelf, and and again, and you can and make smoothies in advance. You know, I wouldn't kind of you know I, I would definitely go about this by preparing everything in advance. So make your smoothie, um, put it in a little bottle, um, yeah. get some good straws. Um, good straws. Yeah. I have. I meant to get it ready, but like I explained at the beginning, my daughter has. Um, actually kind of cold and um so she's only a baby so i was looking after her so just about managed to slap on a bit of lipstick and get here on time i in my dealer bag i've got um one of the straws that you get inside um a, a sports bottle it's a very thick one yeah and it's really excellent because what i could do is i can take a drink it could be a smoothie i can put the straw into it and i can hold the top and almost pet it, it in. into yeah. her mouth by just lifting my finger off um, so she doesn't have to do anything. That was just an invention yeah. the other day, but it came in really handy. Um, so having straws and a, and a sports bottle, something you know that you, they can suck on. Yeah. Um, if you want to get really into it, you have a little camel pack, whatever they're called. You oh know, yeah, 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 I know, oh, lovely. <laughs> and and actually, hydration was going to be something that I was really oh, going to yeah. talk about. Um, yes, so we must talk about that. Yeah. So obviously, as um, as you mentioned, so stay with us. I know we've been going for nearly oh, fifty gosh, minutes, yeah. but this is really <laughs> key right now. So the eating part, and then how much of our body is made up of water? Oh, 60, 60 plus percent. Most of it. Most of it. And as you said, like you know, a, a lot of women kind of have a sort of almost purging, whether it's vomiting or or maybe a little bit of diarrhea as well. So sometimes that's, yeah. it depends. Okay, so one of the hypnobirthing things is 
saying look that doesn't necessarily have to happen if the woman is free of fear so she's in a confident calm state she's well supported she's feeling safe she's much less likely to be yeah. vomiting from fear but it can happen or you might find that you have a massive kind of download as we yeah. call it in our yeah, house yeah yeah um, pre-labor yeah yes and and obviously that is going to be losing you um water but also nutrients and as i kind of listed all those nutrients that are really really important for the hormones and that's you want to be be able to producing those those hormones throughout so you really don't want to lose them um so obviously drinking water but um water with a little bit of orange juice or um, apple juice mixed in um helps with just adding a little bit of sugar into it a little bit of um glucose uh okay. and really nice um i mean coconut water is naturally hydrating i mean i, th I think lucozade is often um, recommended i don't really i think I know there's a lot of rubbish in Lucasade. I don't <laughs> like Lucasade, but a friend of ours gave us a leftover bottle from their birthing, which was yeah. six days before Megan, my daughter, yeah. birthed. And when I birthed Megan, and it was all good, and then the midwife got here, and then it was just in the bathroom in that room there. Um, and I was sitting on the loo and I was holding Meg and I was like, oh, here comes the placenta. And we put a towel in the toilet, put the seat down and then put a bowl for the placenta to plop into because it kind of <laughs> splodges out. Um, and then I went and everything started to go a bit dark. Uh. And apparently I went very pale. And this was this emptying thing. Um, and so I passed the baby over to Andy. And we just cut the cord a few minutes earlier um, while sitting on the loo, glamorous. And um, and then uh, so my midwife laying me on the floor and Andy went and got this bottle of Lucozade. Yeah. What's in it is that's really important is the electrolytes. Yeah. And the sodium and the magnesium and the zinc and the, I can't remember, potassium even. Yeah. Um, and I got back from work on the Wednesday night. I went in to labour on the Thursday night and I started to make flapjack. And you talked about nesting just before earlier. And I think that was me getting ready. I got home from work at like half past 10 at night or something ridiculous. And I was like, I must make flapjack. <laughs> I never make flapjack, Tasha. But I was like, I must make flapjack. So when I got faded, I was just sort of resting on the floor. Andy went down to the kitchen with Megan, got me a bit of flapjack and the Lucozade. And I had that. And that really helped. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. A little while later, managed to get off to bed and into bed with my baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, and and that's the thing. As you say, Lucozade does have the balance of electrolytes that that, that are that, that you need. Um, it's Lucozade Sport, not the not the fizzy, bright orange one. That's right. um, Lucozade just, Sport. Just, that's the, the one that's got the electrolytes. Um, so, I mean, it might not be, you know, as I said, I don't like them, but I think it no. might not be a bad idea to have one or two bottles there as yeah. for those kind of situations when you're just like, I am so lightheaded and I and I need something because I've just, I feel empty. Um, I, I, I was going to say coconut water also mm. has um, a good, uh, it's, it's, it's good uh, source of potassium, um, especially. So it does have the yeah. good uh, minerals in it. Um, I, I also make, a, do a homemade uh, electrolyte. Um, oh, Mix and that is coconut water, yeah. um, some orange juice, uh, and yes. it's really simple. And, and a pinch, pinch of salt because it's the salt that has all of those, um, you know, it's got the sodium in as well. And if it's a natural sea salt, it's also going to have lots of other minerals naturally in there as well. Um, and okay. if you use coconut water, then you're getting the, the, the potassium, yeah. yeah. Um, but, maybe, but sorry, um, go on. I was going to say that's a great drink to have anyway. Again, back to a sports bottle, so you could create your own. I also use Dioralite sachets, which are rehydration just, yeah. sachets, yeah. Um, so ahead of Lucozade. Like it's, I just want to also stress, like, Lucozade isn't enough in labour. Don't take a packet of sweets and Lucozade. That's not that's not what this is about. And if you've been watching, you'll have got that. You'll have realised, like, OK, <laughs> actually, we need to think a little bit more in detail about this. How can we nourish ourselves? And for birth partners, just have what she's having. Yeah. It's not going to do you any harm. Um, yeah, I think Diorolite's great. And then a sports bottle with, you know, either a pinch of natural sea salt or a Diorolite sachet, some coconut water, and then maybe some orange juice or apple juice and a bit more water. So you've got three quarters or a litre yeah. of that, um, especially if a woman is spending time in bath and 
um, or in a birthing pool or in the shower because she's going to be sweating. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's really, really, yeah, really great. Really and the magnesium skin spray stuff, the salt spray, is wonderful because it's slightly oily. Yeah. So you can spray it onto her back, her, back, her bum, her hips, her thighs, yeah. and rub it in and massage it if she wants to be touched. Some women don't want to be touched in any way. The only um, thing I would... Um say about the magnesium spray is some people mm. find that it makes them a little bit itchy <laughs> um there's a sensitive one now yeah, oh is there is there yeah. one that doesn't do that okay yeah because yeah. i use it on the sun when it gets growing pains it seems yeah. to help yeah and a banana. yeah because what i was going to say is if you get one that does make you feel itchy if you spray it on the bottom of your feet it tends to not be quite uh it doesn't make it so itchy and i think that's right. to do with the thickness of the skin but the feet apparently actually absorbs really really well um mm. it's just it's because the skin is that much thicker it doesn't kind of you know it's not as itchy as if you did it on a thin thin bit of your skin like your your wrist or your arms or yeah. legs so but yeah definitely right okay um yeah so we've we've definitely touched on hydration i just want to tell you a little story about um a couple of students that i had um who've just had their second baby um, i haven't heard or met this baby yet i haven't heard about it but the first time around he's a professional track and field athlete if you're one of my students you'll have heard this story um and and we were talking about hydration and i was saying make sure you get two liters of water in 24 hours or you know fruity teas whatever adds up to about two liters in 24 hours and he said, you can drink as much water as you like, but unless you're getting your electrolytes, you cannot be optimally hydrated. And he said before any of his competitions that he competes in, for three days before, he would um, use a rehydration drink or solution or whatever. And I'm like, well, we don't know when three days before our labors are gonna be. So why don't we just say, all right, well, I'll have some coconut water and I'll have a little bit of salt with my food and I'll make sure I'm drinking plenty of water and know when you're hydrated. Look at the color of your pee. If your lips are dry, your mouth's dry, get some water on you. Um, I've got alarms on my smartphone, on my iPhone that flash up 11 o'clock, one o'clock, five o'clock, drink water, just to remind me because I'm busy, I'm a mom and sometimes I forget. So yeah, yeah. anything else to add on um on, on this and we could talk all night yeah we really brilliant. we really can <laughs> um no i mean that really um has covered uh what i had wanted to uh um, yeah. kind of put, put across and as i said i think your chewing timeline it's a really nice visual way mm -hmm. of really thinking about it and and um and especially the bit about the birth partner and making sure that they're eating too <laughs> yeah, they're eating too i know i will show you the drawing i sketched but I'll have to hold it up there. Oh, yeah. If I go like that for a moment and I show you, I can't get it level. <laughs> anyway, go this way. Oh, is it the right way around? Yes. Yeah. So you can see there are two smiley faces on one side and there are two smiley faces and a little baby smiley face at the end and then there's a bit of the centre. Um, and I just annotated it um so yes i'll develop that a bit more um because it just makes sense yeah. okay thank you let's put tash back on hello, <laughs> hello. um <laughs> all right so is that a good place to pause yeah i think um, it is well we're almost at an hour <laughs> we're almost at an hour and um yeah having said we'd be half now um well, i don't think megan's woken up either so that's meant good that news. i felt able to yeah she <laughs> needs to sleep yeah um i i want to remind people about your program Yes. Um, so I should have done that earlier. My apologies. So Tasha is running a postnatal group on nutrition. It's a closed group, and the offer. So we'll put the details in the comments. Is available. There are restricted numbers because she. I've actually got one place left. <laughs> oh, oh! Only the no. one. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about the other group? You're going to have to run concurrently then. <laughs> Well, Come I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I have, uh, yeah, I've got one place left. Um, one yeah, place left. So, so, so we'll... if anyone's interested, what would you like them to do? Yeah, so, um, so the, the, the program is all about preparing for um, nutrition or how to make sure that you're prepared for eating after you've given birth. 
Um, yes. So it's kind of anything really from that first day all the way through the first kind of three months, even beyond really, because it's 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 a good grounding in what what actually constitutes good food and good nutrition. Um, but as yeah. well, it covers things like uh, food for healing, repair, um, breastfeeding, uh, yeah, and, and all of these all of these yeah really essential um, mm -hmm. post pregnancy nutrition information. Um, it's uh it's an eight week program so it starts on monday um this coming monday the 26th we're running it's going to yeah. go for four weeks and then we'll have a two-week break over christmas and then start again in january and it will um, run for another four weeks after that um the yeah. format essentially is that we do a group call once a week uh where i do a half hour talk on whatever that topic is of the week and then we do a q a um every participant in the program gets a hot seat opportunity so that's you know they can bring a question a scenario an issue or just kind of you know safe place to just vent if that's what they need uh, <laughs> okay. um so that's the format uh and then you know there's there's handouts worksheets um some meal plans some recipes and so on so okay. that's the program essentially um if you're interested um Type, type nourish in okay. the comments um and i'll send you a message and get in touch and we'll, we'll get on the phone and have a chat about it um so yeah. yeah type if you're nourish. watching this on facebook live you can also go to tasha de cruz nutrition and uh, like her page please do that give us lots of likes and love i should have asked for that earlier too um and uh if you're watching on youtube then yeah so you can go um back to facebook <laughs> um and find tasha on there yeah okie dokie all right um so we're going to see you next thursday same time 8 p.m london time yeah um and next week we are talking about the same subject yeah. um nourishing yourself once your baby's here and please bring your birth partners along because it's so important or sorry not necessarily just your birth partner whoever is going to be looking after you the new mum people who are going to be doing the cooking and if you have somebody who can do that and it's a really supportive partner get them in to watch this with you all right that's the same time next week and we'll create the event and be able to um show your interest so you get a reminder when it's due on okay all right tasha thank you very very much um for yet another really seriously fascinating um i've learned loads fascinating session um and we look forward to next week yeah um, yeah, Cheers, yeah. thank you so much for having me I, I love this I loved it last week and I've loved this week so, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been great I'm glad we made it happen um so yeah see you in a week or so yeah. cheers folks take bye. care bye bye